Hi, today I'm very excited that I get to share with you my dear younger brother. Well, he's older than me, but he's younger than my other brother, Steve Moore. As you know, my name is Sue Moore Donaldson, and um, he's one of my favorite people in the world. And I hope that you will also uh, not just listen to this, but also go on YouTube because you get to see all his music uh, guitars hanging from the walls behind him. <laughs> Steve, thanks so much for joining us. Steve is a pastor, a retired pastor, though does so much pastoral work right now where they just retired in North, is it Northwest Arkansas, I think. Yeah. Bella Vista, right? He's an yes. author. Um, he writes poetry and he's a mentor to many. I just thought of that this morning, Steve, because there's so many people that you come alongside in you in all your vocations, really, because you've been a school teacher, music teacher, um, you're a father, a grandfather, and a ping pong player that you beat us all. Now, I was raised with three ping pong tables at one point, but Steve <laughs> could beat us all, even dad. So Steve, welcome. And thank you for joining me on Welcome Heart Living a Legacy Life. Thank you, Susu. I mean, <laughs> Sue. <laughs> yeah, Susa Baby Doll, as dad would Susa say. Susa Baby Doll is my yeah. name. Well, you. if you're going to call me that, I'll call you. I always called Steve the porta party, not a porta potty. <laughs> because Steve, whenever we would be bored, we'd call Steve, come on over because you make life more fun. And really, you were just telling me the other day, what are the three, st I mean, maybe this is early on about what your legacy is, but something about fun. You had three things. Uh, oh, let's see. Lots of fun. Uh, no, that's the second one. I forgot. I have to oh, look well. At it. well, well, we'll come up with it later. Oh, but anyway, <clears throat> what, yeah, it gives God I pleasure. I know what it is. Okay, No fear. No fear. Mm. Lots of fun for his pleasure. No that's fear. It. No fear. That's my I, motto if I can remember it. <laughs> no, yeah. Well, yeah. As long as we live it, that's the main thing. That's the thing. No yeah. fear, lots of fun, gives God pleasure. Is that what you no, said? No, for his pleasure. For his pleasure. And why do you think us not being fearful gives God pleasure? Oh, because, no, it's because um, fear, you know, fear is, is, is man's, you know, the fear of man, it brings a snare, it says in the Bible. Hmm. And, uh, and perfect, perfect love, which only comes from God, casts out fear. So fear and God are, are, are opposites. And so hmm. if we're with God, we can just turn our, well, we, we have lots of fears, but we just turn them over to him. Mm -hmm. He takes care of us. Yeah, because we still fear. I mean, to be normal sure. is yeah. to fear. Um, I remember hearing Tim Keller say, well, to worry is normal because we care. And it's a sign of our love for our children. But God still commands us, don't worry. I remember we we just watched this movie the other day, uh, Princess Bride. And, oh yeah. And the grandfather says to the little boy, "Are you worried?" "No, grandfather, I'm not worried. I'm just concerned." <laughs> yes, so we're very we concerned. concerned. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, nothing like adult children to draw us to our knees. Um, yes. Steve, I want you to share the T-shirt since some of us will see this on YouTube that you're wearing. <laughs> so oh, funny. okay. I'm gonna zip it down here. Oh yeah. What part of this? <laughs> Don't you understand? Yes. And describe what is this for those who are yeah, only listening. Just take a look at that. That's, that's just uh, music, uh, you know, just writing down all the different things that music ter music terms that use. Yeah. I've never actually tried to, to read this song. Yeah. But why would you not understand this? You know, yeah. being very yeah. sarcastic. Yeah. And of course, a, mus a musician will probably walk right up to you and say, I do understand it. <laughs> but I, they, I, parts of it anyway. Yeah. They would be in the... Um, minority, I think. Well, yes. see, what, one reason I wanted to talk to you, um, not only because you're older and wiser than myself and fun mm, to be older. around. Yeah. <laughs> and you, um, you have a, a many great legacies, but we were just together. Um, some of my audience knows that we do sibling reunions. Yes. And we were just in Arkansas at your home and got to see your church and meet some of your friends. Um, but one thing your wife said, dear Karen, who I've known since I was junior high, because I was, I think, in eighth grade when you got married. Um, I've known her since junior high. Well, yeah, not, it's not quite. Yeah. And I, I was going to start off by saying I've known Steve my whole life, literally. <laughs> but um, one thing she said this last time, and it was it just struck me as so being so true. And I thought then I go, wow, that'd be a great thing to talk to Steve about on my podcast. Uh, she said this very simply, Steve bleeds music. And I thought, why, why do you think Karen said that, Steve? Well, um, because 
music is just part of my life to the point where, you know, I make up a song about something and it, it just comes, you know, and I'm not really that great of a melody uh, writer. I'm not a composer, but I'm a, a lyricist. So I, I'm a poet. Mm. So uh, I, I know a tune and uh, then I just take the song and put it to that tune. Like uh, I was teaching my ukulele, I was doing a, an assembly and I, I was telling the kids, um, we're gonna. I'm a school teacher too, so we're not gonna do music for a while. We're. I was playing my ukulele, so um, we're gonna have a have a um, a spelling bee. So who, uh, who's the best speller in the school? And this eighth grade girl stood up. I said, "Spell ukulele," and she says, um, "Y O U." I said, "No, that's not how you spell ukulele." <laughs> Sit down. Then all the kids raise their hand. I went, I can do it. I can do it. Nobody could spell ukulele. And then. But I asked the principal and she couldn't spell it. Oh, so that's I hilarious. I didn't mean to, uh, it, to embarrass you, but I just made up this little song earlier. It goes like this. And now they'll never forget how to spell ukulele because it's right. in a song. So right. that's, you know, I, I, songs to me have, have value for, for learning as well as entertainment. So. Oh, wow. Well, you can see why I call him a porta party. I came across these. I still have cassette tapes. I'm sure Steve does too. Steve would make a, what he called Papa Steve song bags. How many? 14, 12? No, I've made nine. Nine. Okay. Cause I have the ninth one in my hand and I can show it for those who can. And then this, he always went by Papa Steve. And my kids were raised on Papa Steve song bags. So they knew these songs that would tell stories, ballads, some were ballads. Most of them were pretty hokey and a lot of them were funny. <laughs> funny. I, mean, I have great, yeah, I have great <laughs> memories of mom laughing so hard. She's practically falling off the chair because of his yeah. silly songs. But my kids loved it. In fact, one time Steve was visiting and it was um, a time when Bonnie was in fifth grade. And so my oldest was in fifth grade. She's 33 now. And Steve was the entertainment uh, at her classroom. We've never forgotten that. And it was, yes, she was so that. proud of her uncle Steve being the main entertainment. And he also did puppets. So uh, before I forget, I will say this again at the end, Steve is, you know, how often I have uh, authors on this podcast and we give away a copy of one of their books. Steve is also an author, but I asked him if he could somehow give away a music lesson. And so if you would leave a comment and share it on your Insta story or however we're going to do that this week, your name will be entered to win one free 30 minute lesson of the music of the um, instrument of your choice. And these are the ones that Steve can teach because he is a full time, well, part time music teacher right now in his retirement. I don't think he'll ever retire. Mm -hmm. And these are the different instruments and uh, catch me if I forget one Steve harmonica uh, yes. guitar he taught he's a wonderful guitarist let me tell you a ukulele of course banjo piano and then uh, more recently he's been uh, teaching songwriting classes so if you want to be in well, I, I basically like, call it music theory music theory okay but, uh, but it's applicable for songwriting. yeah and it's not well, so I'm, much the words it's the yeah. music part of it well, I remember, uh, actually, even though you're seven years older than I am, I remember the day you came home from high school and said that they were going to start a new class because you asked for it in high school, which was music theory. That's am right. I re am I remembering I that, that right? Yeah. Yes. And yes. so because she he went to the music uh, teacher, I guess, at the high school in Palos Verdes High School and said, I want this. And of course, she knew how to do it, right? So, yes. she, could, so she could teach you music there. And then you majored in music or did you major in elementary education at well it, you had to major in a field you couldn't major in elementary education so oh, i got okay. my degree in music education oh. with an elementary degree right um, elementary education emphasis right so anyway um back to the giveaway if you um win you'll and i'm gonna let and steve's gonna let you have three winners so you know um, everybody tell your friends, and this could lead into something, um, into music lessons, maybe as a Christmas gift for a friend or for a child or for even yeah. a hus a spouse, you know, like when they retire and they finally want to learn how to play guitar or yes. ukulele. Steve, would you play a little song for us on um, your ukulele? We well, already did that, but were you going to do one from Toy Story? I was showing off my new no. Apple Watch that has Toy, Toy Story on it. 
You want to play that? One of my very favorite songs in, in all the world is You've Got a Friend in Me. Because wait, not is that only a different, do, wait, 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 wait. Is that a different size ukulele that you're holding right now? Uh, this is not the same one. I just, this is called a, a tenor uke. Okay. I always recommend even the smallest kids to get a tenor rather than the little tiny sopranos. Because okay. you'll never outgrow this. It's not oh. very big, really. Okay. It's much smaller than a guitar. But anyway, and this is... Uh, uh, one of my favorite songs because it says so much and it's really fun to play on the uke. It's difficult, but I've had some of my students after about two years of lessons, they can play it just like I'm playing. Yeah. You got a friend in me. You got a friend in me. When the road looks rough ahead and you're miles and miles from your nice warm bed. Just remember what old pal said, oh, you got a friend in me. Now, for the person listening uh, who's never played a musical instrument, how are you? How would you encourage them to go ahead and, and take a lesson and get started on something? Oh, I, my rule is you have to succeed the first. You have to succeed, or else, or I haven't succeeded. You have to be able to play a song. So I start off with. Um, do you recognize that? Mama's little no, baby, baby loves short, short and bread. bread. So they're actually playing a melody, and all they have to do is know the numbers of the strings. Oh. Four, four, three, two, one. So they go three, one, four, one. And I taught kindergarten, kindergartners, 30 kids. Well, there's about 20 in the class, um, how to play that. And they would go three, one, four, one, three, one, four, one, three, one, four, one, two, two, three. Oh. And they, I can play. And then the next thing they do is play the chord. Mama's little baby love shortening, shortening. Um, so it's really easy because the open <laughs> strings are an are a chord. So what um, you meant what at the beginning was you want you want everybody to leave their first lesson having been able to have some ability to play something. Yes, they will I think believe. that's a, that's a great teaching tool because you want I mean aspiration because you want people to feel successful. Right, nothing succeeds like success. Yes, and I tell them. Uh, you're not you're not playing just to please yourself. When you go home, you have to play for somebody else. Mm -hmm. So be, even if you don't don't have to sing well, but but you play the song, and they'll recognize it if you do that. But somebody else has to hear it because music is designed to be bl a blessing to others. And I mm -hmm. teach that to my kids, whether they're Christians or not, and mm -hmm. because I want them to, to realize God uses people to bless other people. Now, what about you play, you play guitar every night, late night before you go to bed. So that's playing for yourself though, right? So that goes against what you just said. Oh no, it, it, it would be like saying, I go to church, but I never have private devotions. Mm -hmm. and, I, and I believe a, a balanced Christian worships in the large group, as large as possible. And we worship together and listen to the same message at the same time. Yeah. Uh, okay. And then we meet in small mm -hmm. groups. So we can apply that message and ask questions and get prayer. And then we go one-on-one -on -one with God. And that would be my one-on-one -on -one with my guitar. Oh, okay. So it's, I, I get, I have a, a biblical reason why I can get away with it. <laughs> well, <laughs> I like it because I always go to bed with Steve playing guitar downstairs. So that's really a blessing. Um, one time my, my youngest daughter, I was playing, her name is Heidi. And I was playing just late at night. I call it noodling. Mm -hmm. And uh, I stopped, put my guitar away, and I heard this soft little voice. Papa, don't quit. I'm not asleep yet. Oh, <laughs> that's so cute. Heidi, I'll play oh, one more song. That's <laughs> so cute. Now, um, well, I don't know if you can answer this it's kind of a big question, but in what way has music impacted your life? And do you think music is for everyone? Because my husband will not, he doesn't like to sing along with the praise music. It's just, you know, Mark, you love him. Oh, yeah. But he's but he played cornet in high school. I don't know if you knew that. I knew that he was yeah. in the marching band. So he appreciates music, but whether yeah. he, he would never participate like you and I doing solos and all that sort of thing. What was the first part of your question? Because I'm already answering the second. Oh, part. that's right. Um, my first part was uh, in what way has music impacted your life? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, music changed my personality. Oh, wow. I mean, well, well, God. You know, gives us a personality. Sure. And I, I don't, we, I don't reject what he gives me, but it brought my personality out that I didn't know I had. Oh, wow. I'm really, I always thought of myself as kind of an introvert. I'm not an introvert, but obviously but, not. But in junior high and high school, you know, I just didn't. Anyway, 
when I learned the guitar, I played piano since I was five, mm -hmm. but took formal lessons at starting at 10, mm -hmm. continuing until, until I was 19. So nine years of formal piano lessons. But I got the guitar when I was 13, and uh, I did the same thing everybody does. I went in my room and played for, for myself, and nobody else gets to hear it. And mom wouldn't give us lessons. She said, I'm paying for lessons. I'll get you a guitar, but we're not paying for lessons. So I, Mrs. Wilson was my piano teacher, and the Kingston Trio was my oh, guitar teacher. I love Because I had their records, and I played along with the. I mean, I tried to play along with their music. And well, don't I, you think, I feel bad what you said about mom, because it's not like she was a witch. I just think we didn't have the money. <laughs> well, there's five of us, and she was trying to give everybody lessons. Yes, no, that's right. Yeah. No, and, and, and she really, she didn't relate to guitar. Yeah. That was not her generation. No. She uh, related to the piano. Sure. In Oregon and church music and stuff. So anyway, but anyway, so so the, when I learned to play the guitar and I was able to play enough so that I could bring it down to the youth group at church, oh. and start playing for singing, they go, Steve, come to our party and bring your guitar. Wow. And I go, oh, it's not me they want, but they want the guitar connected to me. So they want me as long as I bring my guitar, which was fine with me. Yeah. And then we went to Mexico when I was eight, 18. Uh, for our senior year, we went to Mexico for a gospel team, and I brought my guitar. We learned lots of songs, and most of the songs we learned were in Spanish. Wow! So, but the, but the chords don't matter, you know. So, I, and from then on, I realized I'm a guitar player, and wow. that brought me into, um, you know, into where I was useful to people, you know, and they would they would they would because they, they would be entertained. So the second part of your question is, what is the value of music? Is it valuable for everybody? And here's my answer to that. Uh, I'll give it to you in Japanese. Kyotsugo. Hmm. Kyotsugo is a Japanese word I learned in Japan. It means universal language. Oh. Music is the universal language. I agree. Everybody, nobody doesn't like music. It's like nobody doesn't like to breathe. Hmm. Nobody doesn't like to eat. It's just, it's, it's just uh, breathing and eating is for your body, music's for your soul. I mean, the hmm. arts, mm -hmm. but the best art. Now, I'm not prejudiced, but I'm the best <laughs> art is music. Let me tell you something. There's an article, this article in Time Magazine, What Makes Kids Smarter? 10 Facts Backed by Science. Number one on the list, music lessons. Wow. That really makes kids smarter. And they tested it with IQ. And it's this plain and simple research shows music lessons makes kids smarter. Wow. So it's a valuable thing. And another, yeah. another article that went along with that just said that it's good for older people too. Mm. And it helps them to, that, to offset the deleterious, whatever that word means, effects of aging. Oh, yeah. yeah mm. so, so music. And so guys like Mark. And so in my, I have a, a pep talk that I give all pers prospective students. And they have to read it first before they mm -hmm. even take the lessons. Oh. And, then, and in there, it talks about music as a universal language. Nobody doesn't like music. But then I said, the majority, and I have an actual statistic on this. The majority of, of, of Americans that we do in America are only consumers, but a minority, and I think it was something like 14 or 15 percent, are makers of music. And mm. they are the ones who want to take music lessons because they want to actually produce. Mm. Everybody is a consumer. It just, it just, it's part of our DNA. Sure. Music makes us move. It makes us love. I mean, helps us in our loving and, and relationships. But when you make music, then you're then you're being creative and, and you are one who is you God's using you to use music to bless other people. And it's so yeah. much more fun to be a music maker than just a music consumer. Well, and I think the word creative scares off people. They say, well, I'm not creative. In fact, um, in second grade, my teacher laughed at my pig I'd made because I colored it pink. And she goes, pigs are not really pink. And it's funny how I don't remember her name, but I remember how she made me feel badly. And I think... Yeah that um some random comment i mean i'm sure she never even thought she said something bad to me no there was some random comment could really uh destroy your thoughts that you could be creative so i think you're being so encouraging and perhaps remind me to give the link to that pep talk in the show notes and then people oh, can sure. see what they're getting into if, if they mark win the contest he, yeah if your husband mark were in my in my community yep i'd say mark come and join joyful noise that's a mm -hmm. band i started at church Okay. And we have 24 people and everything from juice harps to, to uh, trumpets and all kinds of instruments in between. And I would really, I, I'd say this music is so easy. Just come and play along with us. And yeah. he might not, 
But yeah. the thing is, there would be an opportunity for it. Yeah. And, and I mean, it, I'm bringing people out of the woods in this band. <laughs> I think it's wonderful. It's such an opportunity to create and also to bless others. I have a question that has nothing to do with music, but I just remembered it this morning. Something that's very unique about my brother is he normally, when he wears a regular shirt with a pocket uh, or a jacket, he has what he calls my brain in my pocket. It's a tiny little notebook. Do you have it on hand that you can hold it up for the viewers? Because he's wearing a t-shirt right now. I think, is that called my brain in my pocket? There it is. Papa Steve's brain. Now, um, <laughs> Obviously, I take it, my rule is I take it everywhere but the shower. Okay, good. I'm glad you don't <laughs> take it to the shower. Uh, I, I want to ask you this. When did you begin doing that? And how has it served you? I think I started in college. No, so I, that I was think, a long time ago. Yeah, I mean, I, I've had and I for a while I was I was saving them. Oh. And I do have box, uh, several boxes full, but I don't have all of them. And I because I write in there. Um, there are things written in there that I want to remember because I, I, I hear a quip or a quote or a fact. I don't like going to the movies because they won't stop the movie for me <laughs> go back so I can hear that quote. But at home, yeah, you can do <laughs> that at home. <laughs> yeah. And uh, people's phone numbers, um, just anything that I that I don't think I'm going to remember, I, you know, I put I, I put in there. Uh, I don't know if you have time for this. I, I probably not, so I'll skip it. But I wrote a poem about it. Yeah. And I don't. I used to have it memorized, but I don't now. But I have it here. Anyway, the idea is, uh, I have a paper memory. My mind. Here's the last stanza. I have a paper memory. My mind deserves no crown. Uh, how quickly I forget the things that I've not written down. <laughs> Uh, that is so true. I am a paper piler. And then I can't remember where I put it or that I even wrote it down. Is there any particular um, rhyme or reason to your things that you can actually find something in that notebook? Is it so small that it doesn't matter? You can flip through all the pages. Uh, that's exactly right. It's, so, it's small enough. I got these at Walmart and it is an advertisement. Uh, <laughs> they have about 100 pages and this wow. is a brand new one. I just started. They go about six months and this gets totally filled up. Here's the, here's the old one. Yeah. And it's completely filled up with stuff. Yeah. And part of the part of the stuff I put in there uh, is uh, my list of things to do today. Oh, okay. Because I told you the other day, you're number six, Stu. Sue. So yeah, yeah. Getting ready for this interview was number six. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad at least I was number six on your list, Steve. As you know, this is a legacy. Uh, this is a legacy life podcast, and I'd like you to share with us, maybe in a sentence or two, what legacy. Uh, do you want to pass down to those who know and love you? Um, I thought about that, and it's hard to answer just in one sentence. I know. It's not so much um, any particular knowledge or anything, I, I, but I, what I want to be known or remembered yeah. for yeah. is uh, it's a simple, it's such a simple word. It's the word good. And I told you I'd, I'd share this. So it's just some, a, a devotional I came across. And he says it better and quicker than I, if I try to explain it. Okay. J.R. Miller, a pastor of the last century. Um, let me find it here again. Anyway, he was talking about there are, there are um, here it is. A good man is based on a verse in Proverbs 12 too. A good man obtains, obtains favor from the Lord. And he says, a good man is one who loves God and does his will. The scripture does not say a great man. Does not say a rich man. So I, I, I don't want to be a great man. I don't want to be a rich I'm never going to be a rich man. <laughs> uh, it doesn't say a strong man. Uh, it doesn't say a man of rank, of nobility. If any of these were qualifications required, to attain God's favor, uh, there would be many people who never could obtain God's favor. And it wouldn't even be their fault because not everybody's going to be those things, but everybody can be good. And he says, the qualification is a good man. Goodness is within the reach of all of us. Hmm. If only we are good, it matters little what our condition in other regards are. And so that's what I want to be remembered. And of course, the definition of good is legion, but it goes with honest, courageous, godly. I mean, the word God is 
in better than the word good mm -hmm. and i want to be godly mm -hmm. so that's in, in a simple way um an, another something that i that i had written a long time ago the name more my last name is more mm -hmm. um there are so many i mean in my brother is Hyatt Moore the third, his son is Hyatt Moore the fourth, and his son is Hyatt Moore the fifth. We call him High Five. Yep. <laughs> and uh, I don't get that privilege because I have three daughters and they all have, they're all married wonderfully and they all married men and they have different last names. I can't pass on my family name. Actually, I had a son. He lived 17 hours, Peter mm -hmm. James Moore. Yep. And then he's gone. And I, I, I just kind of felt bad. I still have a little bit of bothers me a little bit. I don't get to pass my name on. Mm -hmm. I, have, I have 25 in my family, counting my wife and me, our three daughters and our, our 11 grandchildren and our five great grandchildren. But none of them are Moors. Mm -hmm. A pastor I heard say once this, he said, if we have passed on to our progeny, the name and fame of Jesus, isn't that enough? Yep. Isn't that so much better? And then that's all that matters. And that silences our egotist. And that it is, it's ego. Mm -hmm. It silences our egotistical gripes. This is my own writing now about no more mores. Yeah. It's his name that counts, not mine. It's Jesus, right. only Jesus. Mm. So I want to pass the faith along, but the faith has to be, has to be uh, surrounded by um, things that make sense to the little ones. And it isn't just theology or doctrine. It's got to be goodness that they see mm -hmm. in their grandpa or their, mm -hmm. their dad. Mm -hmm. and I remember the Gaither vocal band saying, helping to build the faith of another, passing the faith along. Mm -hmm. So that's what I want to do, build yeah. the faith. But I just happen to use the tools of music and poetry and humor and just, you know, uh, relational fun. Yeah. And also the word of God. You're um, an excellent teacher and People always want you to be leading things because I think God has gifted you with, with leadership. And it reminds me that interesting you use the word good. Years ago, mom was up visiting here in the, in our town, and she loved to go look at houses. So we would get the, you know some poor intrepid realtor to drive us around. And <laughs> I remember we're standing on the sidewalk out in front of our house afterwards, and he was talk, chatting with her and. And there was something she must have said about, oh, I don't want to use up your time or I couldn't spend that much money or whatever she would say. Uh -huh. And he said, you're a good woman, Mrs. Moore. Uh -huh. And she said, um, oh, no, young man, only God is good. <laughs> and I thought, well, it, good and for you, mom. I've said that too. Call yeah. no man good. Jesus yeah. himself said it. Yeah, that's he's right. A good master. But and see, when, when the thing about mom and about you as well is that we we don't just talk about God in the confines of a church, but it's part of who we are. Yeah. And that's what people, they don't all come to know God through relationships with us, but at least they know where we stand. And um, the fact that you bring so much joy to the your neighbors, just walking your darling dog, et cetera. Now, did you have to overcome any obstacles or meet any challenges to pass on this legacy of um, passing on Jesus to others around you? Um, yes. And the biggest obstacle is my, is my pride mm. that everyone has. Right. And uh, it, it gets, it gets the best of me. I, I don't intend, no one does, well, maybe they do, but I don't intend to be prideful, but I'm so confident that I walk over people sometimes, don't mean oh. to, even my own kids. And uh, if I can do it, you can do it. Right. Maybe, maybe they can't. And I might put too much pressure on somebody. And so sometimes I leave people in the dust and I feel really bad about that. I'm, you know, it's one of the, it's the rough edge. Everyone has talents and gifts from God that has rough edges. Mm -hmm. And through experience, some of those rough edges can get rough, rubbed off. But in the meantime, you've left the people, some people in your wake that may, may, may not feel comfortable around you. Mm -hmm. And that's, I've had some of that happen. Mm -hmm. That makes me sad. And I, I want it to be better between now and then, between now and the end. Yeah. Like I told you the other day, I don't want to be a grizzly bear. I want to be a, I want to be a teddy bear. Yeah. I wrote a poem about that. Yeah, of course yeah. you did. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Steve, I remember a few years ago, plus that's beautiful. The testimony you just shared, because we all have things that 
I don't see you that way because I'm same way. Maybe that's why I, you don't bother me. <laughs> <laughs> but can everybody be like you and me? Yeah, huh? <laughs> yeah. Praise God, they aren't. I, my husband just rolls his eyes. But yeah. uh, <laughs> my wife does. <laughs> yes. But the thing of it is, is that uh, you admit it. See, there's people who go to their deathbed and they don't know why they've hurt somebody's feelings. They didn't mean to, but they think it's their problem. And yeah. your humility oh. is humility is the way we get closest to God because he goes, look, yeah. I know you're this way. Just admit it. And yeah. you, you, right. just, you just admitted it to the airways. And I praise God for that. <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> <laughs> but to be a teddy bear, that's that's pretty wonderful. And I think that goes right along with my last question, which is how do you embody God's welcome in your life? I embody God's welcome in my life. Well, I know that God loves everybody, the whole wide world. He wants to, He wants everybody in his family. So I want to be God to them, if I can say that carefully. Yes. I want I want because you said embody. Mm -hmm. Sounds like incarnation to me. Mm -hmm. So I want to be, I want to be the welcoming of God incarnate in the lives of everybody. Yesterday, I'll give you an example. A man that comes to our I, I teach a Bible study at the old folks' home near us. And this guy had the idea of the book that we're studying. I said, let's do your idea. And then he said, can you give us notes with fill-ins? I said, okay, we'll do that. And now he won't come. Oh, no. He, so I went and saw him in the, in the dining room afterwards. And, and he was talking to somebody else. And I, I come up and just waited there. And he says, what do you want? Oh. And I said, I just came to say hi. I wasn't going to rebuke him for not showing up. Yeah. And he says, go away. Oh. And I go, wow. That's, that's, a, that's a real test. So I yeah. went away. Yeah. And I thought, what can I say now? And here's my saying to myself. What can I say? Nothing. I have to pray. Yeah. And we say, as it come to that, well, prayer should be first anyway, not exactly. last. Exactly. But, but then as I prayed, I thought of something. Oh. I want to go to him if I get a chance. And I'll just have to take the chance. I'll just go over there. Knock on his door and say, Will, um, is there something in your life that's that's that you're that's hurting you right now i was wondering if it might be or if it or is it me <laughs> and that's okay if it's something else mm -hmm. i totally understand you don't have to tell me but or if it's me maybe i need to confess something to you i don't think i don't think so but he might, mm -hmm. he might think so mm -hmm. and, and after that i'll be done yeah i think we have to give people a chance to tell you uh if there's something bothering them about you but then after that uh, you, you leave it up you know it's the balls in their court god's mm -hmm. gonna work on them from here on out mm -hmm. so well i think the meaning well you probably know this more than i do because you went to seminary but the meaning of christian is to be a little christ is that right yeah and yeah. so when you say that we are to be god's welcoming that's the whole idea i i've been speaking on it for a hundred years it seems but the idea is that god welcomes the world through us i mean he commanded us to do it and one way to yeah. do it is through welcoming them into our lives, which you do all the time, and into our homes, uh, which you force Karen to do all these years because she's the introvert of the family. Uh, to, I want to tell you what I tell the audience the one thing that you did when you were asked to be a youth pastor in this church and you hadn't been there for a while, and you wanted to get to know all the kids. And so one <laughs> way one way to do it fast was to invite a group of them. I don't think you invited the whole youth group. No, over I did week. three or four at a time. Okay, and what did you do? The three P ministry, I call it. We had a three P party. It okay. was called a three P party. And the three P's were no ping Pepsi. pong counts as one. Okay. So really, it would be a four P's, but yes, ping pong. We had a ping okay. pong table, ping pong, Pepsi, and pizza. Oh. And if okay. it, if they didn't like Pepsi, we had you know Orange Crush or root beer. Yeah. But the point was, we had food and we had games. Right. And they didn't have to know how to play ping pong, but we still played it. And sometimes we play other games. And we would do three or four kids at a time because with ping pong, you know, you can play two on a side, you know, so that's why the three. Mm -hmm. And so also we, we used to play round robin. We could just go around it. When it's your turn, you pick it up and go. Then you run around. Yeah. yeah. That's well, I hope I, I'm sure the audience has heard today that I have grown up with a very fun brother and you're all very jealous. Um, <laughs> but he is one that I could share with you, especially if you go to Northwest Arkansas right now. And Steve, thank you. This has been an absolute delight. I know you've encouraged so many and that you continue to, and I'm proud to be your sister in a very humble way. <laughs> That's a good kind of pride. Yes. And I'm proud to be your little brother. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Watch that. Thank you. Love you. Bye. Okay. Bye-bye.